it has been four days since Hurricane Barrel made landfall in Kariaku. And today we are taking a power boat with Spice Island Marine and we are going to ground zero. We are going up to Kariaku. It's about 40 miles away. They have a boat full of supplies, chainsaws, generators, tarps, water, um, and just, just things needed to, to help out with the relief effort there. I really don't know what today is gonna be like or look like um, from drone footage I've seen online. It looks really, really bad. Um, I expect it to be a pretty hard and emotional day. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we're in store for, but we wanna make this video and document the day along the way to show you guys at home uh, what these people are dealing with. It's been a couple of weeks since capturing these images on my camera and I still don't have the words to describe the devastation. I don't think there are any words. Everything is just destroyed. We just arrived to Tyrell Bay here with the Spice Island crew and it's really heavy. Um, here to see all of the destruction. Boats everywhere destroyed, so much damage. Uh, more masts off than masts that are still attached. And really the goal of this video is to just show what's happened here and um, you know get the word out that people here on this island, they need help. Um, and just try to document that the best we can and, and talk to people um, who have survived this and, and hear their stories. My name is, is Romel, Romel from Greenwood Caribou. Romel, now is your house okay? I'm, my house is gone. The I'm so sorry, gone. I'm and so my sorry. Boat, my boat is gone as also. Are you but a I'm fisherman? A, yeah, I'm a fisherman and I'm also a water taxi operator. I do like island hopping tours. Oh man, how long have you been doing that here on the island? Oh my God, for the past 10 years. Oh. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's part, of the, it's part of our livelihood, but still, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's part of nature, so. We can't force, we can't fight, we can't stress out too much, but it's just to pick up the scraps and then move on. I'm, 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 I, got, I got good spirits, I mean, and I know how to how to work things on, so I, I don't want to be like lingering and waiting and, you know, I just sure. got to do what I got to do. I mean, I'm already in my mind, I already done design, I have a structured design, which I'm going to be putting in place for my building, yeah? How do you have such good spirits when, when you lose everything? Well, I mean, I'm already, already prepared, and I mean, I look at what happened in the other islands, and I say, I mean, I don't want to be like, stressed out and depressed myself and see oh that's the end of the world no man you know i mean this is just like a gotta keep moving this is like another building block for me yeah yeah well i wish you all the best thank you very much nice to meet you thank you for talking to me yeah, yeah, god you bless guys, you you guys welcome <laughs> man So as we're walking around the boatyard, we've noticed uh, this one catamaran here on the end that doesn't have any damage and all these people gathered under. And we quickly realized they're all looking down at their phones. So fellow crews are actually, um, I'm not sure how this happened, but there's Starlink here now and um, everyone's just gathered trying to connect with loved ones, probably reaching out some of them for the first time in days. Um, we're now four days after the storm pass through and the entire grid system's uh, wiped out. So these people don't have communication outside of the island to check on their families and uh, let people know they're okay. So it's amazing to see that um, there's connectivity now that people can do that. You've finally been able to make contact today. Yeah, that's so important because we our family members, they see the disruption, I guess, from the news. Sure. So they weren't able to get in touch with us. So, you know, this is a great, you know, it makes us feel a little better to be able to call our family overseas. 
I never know that we're alive. Yeah, I'm, I can only imagine what a relief that must have been. Who is the first person you called? My mom. Your mom. Yeah, and I, then my daughter. I bet that was emotional. Oh, yes, it was. And then yeah. my daughter, and then it was a short call, but um, I made them the yeah. So this is my second time calling. Right? Second time calling, yeah. So I came back down here to Hillsboro. Okay. So this is the Wi-Fi hotspot, so I came to get some Wi-Fi. I hate to ask, but did you lose everything? My roof, my roof. Your roof, okay. Yeah. But not everything, I have my life. You have your life, yeah, yeah. and you're and you're smiling. Yes, how how right. are you able to smile? Happy to be alive. Yeah. You know, happy to be alive. So since we are on limited time today, we have hopped in the car with Andal, who rode over from um, Grenada with us. He is actually the manager of Budget Marine here in uh, Karyaku, the Karyaku branch. And thankfully, your car is okay, <laughs> minus the back window. Um, being shattered out. We certainly appreciate you giving us a look around. Um, you live here yeah, on Karyaku, yes. right? Yes. I spent the hurricane on island. On the island? Yeah. Tell me what that was like being on the island during this. That was very scary. I've never seen something like that before. Like, I think I saw tornadoes mm -hmm. during the hurricane. You know, everybody, roof gone, house flat, when including you in your my. House? Yeah, I was in my house when the roof went, then we went downstairs and then the downstairs part stood up, but the flooring went as well. Oh. Yeah, so it was terrible. And, and how long did this last? It lasts, the hurricane lasts, let's say like three hours from about nine o'clock to about 12, yeah. roughly. Wow. Yeah. And now it's all your family on this island? Yeah, just on my family on this island. And everybody is okay? And alive? everybody's okay, alive. That's a blessing. Yes. So, what we're riding through right now, I mean, everything is just. We're in the village of Leicester gone. and everything is. Well, this is one of the hard hit areas as well. You stayed here for the storm? What's your name? Fluffy. Fla Fla Fluffy. 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 Is that your real name or is that a nickname? My name, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So where are you from? Um, we're from Florida, but we're on our boat in Grenada. Uh -huh. So yeah. 40 miles closer, we wouldn't have had a boat. Um, so we, we feel that, uh, you know, we should, we should give here. back by raising awareness and, and trying to help as much as we can because it could have could have been us, you know? Um, wow. What do you do? Yeah. Do? Yeah. yeah start again? Yeah. Have you been through anything like this before? No, we never had this, um, all of this in, um, in, um, character before. Not this, this is the, the, the worst. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. yeah I see a lot of people working and it looks like everything is moving. People just want to get going. Do you feel like that's kind of the, the attitude here? That is it. Yeah, can you kind of paint that picture for me on, on what people are thinking and saying around here? We just need to move forward now. Yeah. That is it. Move forward. We can't sit there and cry. We just let them move forward. Move forward, yeah. Yeah, that is it. Well, yeah. it's pretty powerful. That is it. Oh. All good. Then. If you could maybe say something to the world who's watching about Karyaku, what would you tell them about your island? I would say it. We're just different, untouched. We're still very... We're just a different kind of people, a different kind of island, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's all I see. Yeah. There's no other island like us. We'll be, we'll be able to get them, they, they, they not. We'll come back strong. Yeah.
I had never been to Kariaku until this day, so I don't know much about the island, but what I'm quickly learning is that the people here are very strong and resilient. Their island is decimated. 98% of the buildings here have been totally wiped out. circumstances oh, no. obviously your home has a lot of damage um, can you tell me about your store as well um the window is broken so water made its way inside so it's completely flooded mm -hmm. I haven't had time to get anything done because I'm trying to sort things at home I don't know when I'm gonna finish but yeah. I'm just you know one day at a time sure sure uh, you were here when the storm came through? Yes, yeah. Oh my goodness. What must that have been like? I'm still traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still traumatized. I know, I mean, I've experienced two hurricanes um, before. I don't even know how to... It's, it's, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. We just have to be grateful that we're alive and everything is going to fall in place yeah. one day. Can you talk about how the grid system is completely wiped out so therefore the government can't get across messages because people can't receive them right yeah so the problem is you don't know exactly what's going on when you're on land because we don't have no form of connection to see well this is this and so the government is going around manually with the loudspeakers trying to get the message across oh, wow. so it's, that's going to take a while also i also see uh some animals on the loose what's, yeah do you know what the status is of well, animals on the island? Um, I've seen a, a lot of animals on the island so far. I don't know where Just they... kind of everywhere. Yeah, I don't know how they survived this hurricane, but they did a good job of doing that. And right now, we just let them go to go find food and stuff to survive as well. The famous Paradise Beach, um, as you can see right there. This, I imagine, was the bar area of Paradise Beach Club. Uh, Cole and I have never been here, uh, unfortunately, until now. And we see some cruisers we know, um, specifically the Ocean Bandits. I see uh, SV Sonder Boot Soup Sailing. Met them at the laundromat in Georgetown last year. Um, but... Hano time. Who? Hano time. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see them. Hano time. Um, so, yeah, this is just known to be a really popular um, hot spot among the cruisers, there's a, a sip and paint, and we see this wall here. I am super happy to see that these are still attached, so I'm hoping. Um, Allison has already said she's rebuilding, reopening September 1, so I hope these will be able to be reused and uh, put back in their rightful spot once she reopens. Um, but just the, the catastrophic damage here all along this beach is just it's wild to see it's it's uh honestly hard to put into words uh i know there's no like right words that i can think to say that that just accurately describes this uh but one thing we have noticed just in the people we've talked to today is just it really seems that the people here have a resilient spirit and i think um if we can share that with the world, that's that's a little piece of hope, is that these people are very resilient and uh, I have no doubt it will be put back together and, and I hope we can be a part of that when it when it does happen. If you see your boat name here or if your boat name is uh, on this wall, leave a comment. would love to hear uh, stories about your time here at Paradise Beach Club and your boat name. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy to see that all these didn't get blown away. Oh, these are special memories. All right, Aaron, uh, talk to me a little bit about what's going on here today. Yeah, so basically, it's right now, it's just craziness. Right now, it's just dry trees, things everywhere. We're just trying to cut the trees, make them smaller so we can move them. 
Yeah, we just got some chainsaws, putting them to work. They cut in, they bite it. I see it. You're you're yeah. wearing you're wearing the the tree yeah. shreds. <laughs> Evidence. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, tell me a little bit about your mom's business. Uh, we unfortunately have never been here before until today. Okay, so, well, this property here it was built about five years ago. Yeah. During COVID, people love it because we have good vibes and we provide a different type of customer service. That's not here on the island. And and, the and what does that look like? Kind of paint that picture for me. It's like it's welcoming. It's family ori oriented. You know. Yeah, man. A good lot vibes. Of, just a good lot vibes. of cruisers like this spot. I see you're wearing a, a yeah. hotter time yeah, hat. Tell them. me, tell me about the cruisers who come here. Yeah, we make a lot of relationships with these cruisers. They come in. You know, they paint their signs. They paint their signs. We put them up on the wall. You know. And a lot of them survived. It looked yeah, like. Yeah, they did. So I, I met your mom briefly and she says, I'm reopening September 1. She has a really positive and resilient Yeah, she's attitude. ready. She doesn't stop. It's, it's mixed emotions right now. Some people are working already. Some people sitting down. It's all, they're all over the place right now. Yeah. But we're seeing a lot of help coming and it's giving us more courage, you know, more sure. hope. <laughs> okay, okay, that's so, enough. So what is your name? My name is David Augustine. David Augustine? Yeah. David, I'm Cole. Nice to meet you, buddy. Okay. I'm Emily. This okay. is my wife, Emily. Nice to meet her. Get down, get down. Get down, get down. Uh, <laughs> get down. You must have respect. This is my fifth storm. I think this is the worst one I also experienced. Yeah. Um, well, as you see, we have blown the whole roof, everything out. Yeah. I took refuge in the bus. Oh, you actually went into the bus? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the front, the front break, windshield, what happened? Yeah, I put a telephone post there. Yeah. Break out from on top there and <gasps> going inside it. And damage The it. telephone pole went through the windshield? Yeah, break it out. Break and it you right. were inside when that happened? Yeah, yeah, I was. You weren't in the front seat though, were you? Ah, uh, fortunately I was. Are no you okay? way. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. He didn't come in. The pressure, when I saw it, to be honest with you, there's nothing I could have done, but to just close my eye. Wow. Um, you heard it first, I bet, right? Uh, I was looking out because normally that was the, the second part after the eye. I was looking out. Oh, so the eye had already passed yeah, over the, the, eye, the, the, passed the over. eye wall but on the, the back side? But the second piece yeah. was more powerful than the front piece. Because um, in my experience in, in hurricane, every hurricane have a glare. If the glare comes in front, the, the baddest piece is in front. If the glare come behind, the body species behind. A glare? Yeah, a bright light. A bright light? So yeah. the, su the sun shining through the right, middle of the right, eye? Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So after that pass, I saw the glare. Me and my son, you know, he was outside. I tell him, I say, the worst is yet to come. So he's going. And when I watch my house, the, the back already start leaving. So I come into the bus to take refuge. And then in about five seconds after that, I see the piece of pole break out from on top of there and come in wow. to the bus. Wow. Well, I was sitting there trying to pick up a station, listen to hear what, you know, what I could get on the radio. Gabriel, you grew up in Tyrell Bay. What's that like for you coming back and just seeing the chaos that's now here? Uh, shocking. It's very, very shocking. Um, I mean, knowing how beautiful it was, um, to me, I always grew up thinking that, well, I grew up close to, to the beach and I always grew up thinking that this is the most beautiful beach in the world. I used to say that all the time. And seeing it in the current state, um, it's heartbreaking, honestly. I mean, Dropped off um, mainly some to Budget Marine because uh, we have staff there 
And um, then also to Allison at Paradise Beach and Tim Garraway of Ansel Roach. So, and then also to Shaib, who's our employee, who's going home for the next month to kind of help out his family and, and kind of locate them, hopefully. All right, so we are leaving the main anchorage of Terrell Bay. Um, this is a, what we're seeing here is a like huge mangrove. It's a known as a hurricane hole, but what you'll see from drone footage, a lot of boats got damaged in there. Um, and then you have Turtle Bay Marina, Karakou Marine, the two uh, boat yards in Karakou are both in this bay. And what we just saw was, you know, almost all the monohulls toppled over and then a lot of the catamarans side loaded. So the keels broken off and a couple actually flipped over. So uh, this place got hit very hard. I mean, the eye went over this bay, essentially. It's all too, too, too familiar. Um, and, but, you know, we are a testament to show that you do bounce back. You know, you, you go into a gear that you don't know you have and you build it back. So these, this island will, will bounce back for sure. When you look at the hillside and you see all the debris, talk to, about, talk to us about that. It's crazy, man, because it's like everything is dead. There's, you, there, you're seeing the ground, you're looking through the trees. You wouldn't be able to see that ground. The canopy would be so thick right now. And essentially everything is dead and it's going to turn brown for the next you know, few weeks until it starts to grow back. But you know, hopefully, because we're in the rainy season, things start to catch back naturally. And uh, you know, the life comes back and all the stuff gets cleaned up and the debris. I mean, there's just so much debris. This is such a small island. Um, that's just going to be one of the hard things is, is transporting it and dealing with it. Houses here are built for the most part, wooden with galvanized roofing. Um, we don't really have hurricane codes per se. Newer houses are built out of concrete, but even those, because it's like a block construction, you're not guaranteed um, anything. It's sad because these people rode that storm out there. So you know they were in their house and then they were underneath their house or they were in a car or, or something. You know, they were fighting for their lives towards the end of it. Luckily, the storm hit during the day, so it gives them an opportunity to seek refuge, not in the dark. So we are now in Karakou's biggest town, Hillsboro, right, Gabriel? Yeah. Um, you're looking at kind of the main pier here. So this is essentially down the middle main street right behind this. Uh, these were all guest houses, hotels, small restaurants, uh, fishing, um, the ministries, and it's, it's destroyed. Um, utterly destroyed. We would come stay right over here at the Mermaid Hotel, all of our families. Building looks pretty much intact, but the beach in front of it has just been washed away. So that place is hanging on with its foundation. Um, yeah, Tough to see, huh? it is. Yeah, I mean, it's this is going to be a, a long, a long progress process. When all these places close, the people don't have jobs to go to. They can't collect a paycheck. There's not a ton of opportunities other than that. Um, honestly, that's where yachts really come in to um, play a major port in the economies of these places because you guys bring, you know, you bring your own place to stay and you come and spend money on shore. And I'm sure once they're able to actually sell something, boats will come back here, they'll anchor here, they'll go ashore, they'll have restaurants and, you know, bars and cafes and things like that. So that's going to be, boats are going to be a big, big step in bringing this place back. Our last stop, Ansel Roach, another really popular anchorage that a lot of yachts would anchor right where we are and they would go ashore to Tim's place and he'd cook really awesome lobster barbecues and uh, 
yeah, it was, it was an awesome time. We would bring our kids here, they jump off these rocks and you're just in this little slice of paradise here. Um, There's literally nothing here. Nothing here. There's a lot to be learned from the people of Grenada. Despite tragedy and losing so much, they're still smiling. I think that's because they realize what's most important in life, and that's life itself. No matter how hard the road ahead is for them, things can be replaced, and I think that's a lesson in perspective we could all learn from.